Hey VC, it's Joel coming at you from Planet 13 and this is my hashtag movie soundtrack thread response to what Beth's got going on. She asked us 10 questions, Beth from B-Sides, and these are my responses. I'll hop right into it. So first soundtrack I ever bought would be Wayne's World. I bought it when it came out on cassette and for me it was a no-brainer. I was a big Alice Cooper fan at the time and, and of course Queen was huge with Bohemian Rhapsody. You just could not ignore that and I love Black Sabbath and there, there was a new Black Sabbath track on there by Dio. And you have, you know, yeah, the, the other, there's other songs on there as well. And for me, it was fabulous to have that on cassette and have my high school loving that soundtrack because I was a big Alice Cooper fan. And at the time, I'd be wearing Alice Cooper t-shirts and everyone would kind of be mocking me. Not everyone, but a lot of the preppier people, uh, the influers, the Zach Morris, Morris's, you know, they'd be mocking me going, Alice Cooper sucks, man. You know, because grunge was in and um, I just didn't fit in. I just liked Alice Cooper. And when Alice Cooper appeared in that movie, uh, people just kind of, you know, realized he was more than like, a, I wouldn't say a one hit wonder because he had a lot of hits, uh, but they realized he wasn't a dinosaur. He was still relevant and he was funny. And that scene was pretty funny. Um, I gave that soundtrack to my nephew uh, about 15 years ago. He loved the movie. Uh, he loved the, the drinking scenes in it because I, I think he was like 14 or 15 at the time. And, uh, you know, he was underage drinker and he just loved the scenes where people were on the side of the road. They're picking up their buddy for Bohemian Rhapsody and Wayne's like, that guy partied too hard. And I guess he could kind of relate to that uh, that scene as well as the, the whole Bohemian Rhapsody scene in the car afterwards. Um, and then I also have I wanted to show two scores that I bought. These are the first two scores I ever bought. I bought them on the same day. I bought them before I had my CD player. I was planning on getting a CD player and I was just getting CDs before I picked that up. CD players, like even a crappy one was like a hundred bucks. So these are the first ones I got. Uh, the first one's the theme song to Dracula. And I got these at Sam the Record Man, which is like a famous kind of Toronto uh, superstore for buying albums and media. And then this one, this Vampire Circus is like a mixed, um, Mix CD of various scores from vampire movies. I remember loving the, the, just seeing the trailer for Dracula and just loving the score f like that they had in that. So I had to have this. And then this is just uh, you know a variety of scores. So you got um, the Return of Dracula, Vampire Circus, Fright Night, Transylvania Twist, Children of the Night, Vamp, uh, Transylvania Six Five Hundred, uh, Forever Night, which was like a TV show I think, uh, to die for. Not the not the. Um, not the 90s to die for. This was a different to die for from the, the 80s. The Hunger and uh, Showdown of the Vampire in Retreat, which I don't think I've ever seen. I was always fascinated with scores. I remember renting movies and then taping the scores on, um, you know, an old cassette recorder off. Like The Empire Strikes Back, I'd rent that. And we taped like The Emperor's March off that on some cassette we'd find on the side of the road. Uh, or some, you know, something we might kind of maybe borrow from our parents um, and you know we tape off that next question is the newest soundtrack to your collection that would be this it's Judgment Night I've had it on cassette forever but this is um, the newest vinyl acquisition so this is the music from the motion picture pretty cool mashup of alternative bands and rap bands so you got House of Pain and Helmet uh, Run DMC and Living Color Ice-T and Slayer, Sir Mix-a-Lot, and Mud Honey. So this is probably the only Sir Mix-a-Lot song I know, aside from I Love Big Butts. Um, Booyah Tribe and Faith No More. You also get uh, Cypress Hill, Sonic Youth. You also get Cypress Hill and Pearl Jam. Real cool soundtrack. Um, bought this in high school as well. It's, it's kind of my more introduction to rap. I was never really big into rap, but I like this kind of stuff. And uh, I like the movie as well. And then as far as like newest score would be like the thing which I showed in my last video. Uh, the one I listened to the most, I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to mention a lot. Uh, first one would be Return of the Living Dead. I listened to this quite a lot, especially around Halloween. It's mostly, you know, 80s punk songs. And then I listened to these a lot, um, singles and train spotting. So these are really cool as well. They both kind of are similar in scope. Uh, they're released around the same time. And they feature, you know, popular bands from uh, Seattle. And then this one's popular, like European. 
kind of bands. This one's more grunge and this one's more Euro pop or what have you. Um, they both deal with heroin to some degree, not so much singles, but in, I guess, scope, it would with uh, how heroin impacted the grunge scene or the Seattle scene. And then this one, you know, they talk about heroin quite a bit. And they're both about people before they're getting into their career or they are getting into the career, depending on what you consider a career. And, you know, they're kind of like the same age group. So a lot of overlap, although completely different in one way or another. Uh, another one I listen to a lot would have to be Jaws by um, John Williams. I listen to this a lot. It's fantastic. Uh, my favorite composer would have to be John Williams, I guess, to some degree, as well as Danny Elfman. Uh, these are like compilations of Danny Elfman about a long time ago. Uh, you got Volume 1 and Volume 2. Volume 1, you got uh, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure, Batman, Dick Tracy, Beetlejuice, Stark Grin, Back to School, Midnight Run, Wisdom, The Simpsons, Tales from the Crypt, and Scrooge. And then Volume 2, you got Edward Scissorhands, uh, fabulous. I uh, used in a lot of commercials. To Die For, Doris Claiborne, Black Beauty, Batman Returns, Mission Impossible, Summersby, and Freeway, and Nightmare Before Christmas, and some odds and ends, like some commercials and old TV show inserts. So, favorite commercial. Not really familiar with his work past, um, uh, what was it? The, um, the Headless Horseman. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, uh, which I think was 1999. I don't really know much about his work since then. Uh, so favorite instrumental score uh, would have to be Jaws along with um, Taxi Driver. Love Taxi Driver. Uh, this score reminds me of, uh, just it just captures the essence of being, uh, like, you know those hot summer nights? Might not happen now to you because you're probably older and have AC or whatever. I remember being a kid or a teenager and you had like an exam the next day or you had something important the next day, like maybe the first day on your new job or just a big day at work and you couldn't sleep because it was hot and you had the windows open and it was just humid and, uh, and maybe there's a party going on and you just, there's music and you just couldn't sleep. And uh, this just reminds me of that frustration, that just anger, that just like, oh, I wish I could sleep and you're not. And it just really captures just that frustration for me. Uh, another score, instrumental score, this is like cheating, but it's Goblin. It's like they're kind of best of. Uh, Goblin's like a, a prog German, I think they're German band. And just, they did some excellent work. Uh, so on here you have Zombie, Suspiria or Suspira, uh, Profondo Rosso, Contamination, Tenebrae, just phenomenal. Just some cool snippets from those movies. And then... Um, Next question is, awesome movie with a horrible soundtrack. That uh, was difficult for me to answer. I, I couldn't find anything, to be honest. I Although I do find a lot of modern movies, uh, post-millennium, post-2000, there are some awesome movies I love, but I just don't find the soundtracks to be that great. You know, the 80s, what you, you could rattle off like, in your head without even you know seeing the movie you could rattle off a lot of soundtracks you know people who don't know jaws they know the soundtrack or at least the dun dun people who don't know not that it happens anymore really but who didn't know star wars if you played it for them they'd recognize it now like the recent marvel movies i love those movies but i can't really associate any score with one or the other and it's not to say the soundtrack is bad i just don't find it um fantastic or I guess if you sat down and I put it on I'd probably find it fantastic I just don't find it memorable as those old John Williams or other composer scores that I, I think of and that's just a problem just post millennial in general I don't know if it's just of my age or it's just with uh, how times have changed how things became digital because you know back in the day you kind of you'd rent a movie and you'd watch it a few times on the weekend now we can stream and we can kind of take our time watching things or watch it. You know, there's no rush to watch something. A uh, soundtrack that is better than the movie. This was a tough one for me too because I just love all movies to some degree. And even if I don't enjoy a movie, uh, I always kind of see something that's good in it. 
Uh, I'm going to do this one because even Stephen King said the movie's bad and he directed it. And it's the soundtrack to Maximum Overdrive, which they don't even advertise on the CD. And uh, they just say it in the back there that it is the score or the soundtrack to Maximum Overdrive. And it's all ACDC songs. So this is a pretty awesome ACDC uh, mixed CD. And uh, I just love the movie too. Although it's, it's not good. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. But I just love uh, the concept of this. And um, I love that truck with like the Green Goblin from Spider-Man. It's got the head from that on that really creepy truck. And I just, it's a fun movie. Song of your favorite artist band featured on a soundtrack. Well, that would have to be Wayne's World, but I don't have it to show. So I'm also going to show this one. It is Rock and Roll High School. And again, I'm cheating here because it's got the Ramones, which was one of my favorite bands. And it's got Alice Cooper on here. Again, one of my favorite bands and singers. Uh, so yeah, this would be my favorite um, artist band featured on a soundtrack. Uh, share a soundtrack you think everyone should own. Oh man, I would have to say Boogie Nights. Uh, there's Volume 1 and 2. You could get away with Volume 1. Volume 1's got some great stuff on here. It's, it's a great 70s soundtrack. Mostly like uh, lighter rock, uh, like Jesse's Girl by Rex Springfield or Sister Christian by uh, Night Ranger. But you got, you know, kind of some disco-y stuff on here too. And you got the Beach Boys, uh, God Only Knows. Uh, just just a fabulous soundtrack in general. I just, I just love these. Uh, it's just uplifting too. Feel good music. That's my response to number nine. And then finally, soundtrack grill and wants. Uh, Poltergeist would be one for me. I just love like the, it's got like the children kind of singing. That's one I want. Another grill, which I don't think I'll ever see in my lifetime, is the would be the score to Return of the Living Dead. I just love the, you know, when they got the green smoke coming out of the canister where they play that music throughout. I would love to have that on vinyl, CD, anything. It's I don't think it's ever been released. I have it on a cassette that I taped off the, the movie soundtrack. Uh, although, yeah, it sounds awful because it's got dialogue over it as well as, you know, it's taped from me holding it like four feet away or two feet away from my TV when I was like 12 years old. And then another one, a grill I'd want. So I have this. This is um, Scooby-Doo's Snack Tracks. I'd love to have this on vinyl. This is at a print. So it's the Scooby-Doo soundtracks, uh, like the theme songs from the various iterations of Scooby-Doo. I would also love to have the Scooby-Doo score. You know, the old score where they'd be walking through creepy um, mansions or haunted houses or abandoned airplane lots or car wreckages. Just those scores I would love to have. They're kind of like jazzy and bluesy and just... I just love those, but you know, it's never appeared on uh, vinyl, but you can look on YouTube and they have it on, they say it's high def. So I would love if someone just transferred that onto vinyl as a bootleg or something, or uh, you know, I'd rather have an official release, but I'd love to have that. So that wraps up my thread response. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>